Hello, I'm Joe Dahl. I'm here to show you one way that your company may be able to benefit by using Responsive's patent pending LED control technology. Of all the uses for Responsive technology, the one that seems to get the most interest is its ability to dim non dimmable power supplies controlling LEDs. Many people think this is impossible, but that's obviously because they haven't become acquainted with Responsive's technology. Today, we will dim these LED strip lights with this non-dimmable power supply. It's a Ledmo model 1250, rated at 12 volts, 5 amps, with uh, input of 100 to 240 volts AC. It recently sold on Amazon.com for $9.49 and appears to be representative of widely available designs uh, on the market. We have a little fixture here with a Lutron model TG-600PH triac based dimmer. This dimmer is marketed for use with incandescent bulbs. Uh, although more expensive dimmers that are marketed for compact fluorescence or LEDs should work similarly. And the output of the triac dimmer is wired to a couple of electrical outlets. When I turn the dimmer on, it lights this incandescent bulb, small incandescent bulb, which shows you the effect when I pull the dimmer slider down and push it back up. And as you expect, the bulb gets dimmer and brighter. Well, that's no big surprise so far. Now, let's see what happens before we look at responsive technology. What happens when we just plug our non-dimmable power supply into the triac dimmer and its output into the LED strip. We flip it on and start attempting to dim and you can see that the incandescent bulb does in fact dim while the LEDs remain pretty much at full brightness. Maybe they dim just a little bit and you start to hear humming noises coming from the power supply. This is obviously not the use scenario that the designer of the power supply had in mind. Well, we intend to dim this power supply with the assistance of an external dimming adapter. Uh, that means we won't have to alter the power supply itself in any way. Uh, now you can build a similar adapter uh, to work with several designs, or you could integrate the components of our adapter in into the design of your specific power supply for a better form and economy. Our adapter has at its heart a small microprocessor. It's an Atmel model AT Tiny85 microprocessor. And uh, we've used a circuit here from our commercially available LED strip dimming adapter. To that circuit, we just added a couple of components, an, an infrared uh, optical isolator and a resistor with a cord to connect that to the AC line. Now on the microprocessor, one of the pins is used to sense the power signal. And by connecting these extra couple of components, uh, in addition to sensing the DC power supply level like it normally does, It'll also be able to evaluate the signal from the AC line. Now the, the basic scheme here is that uh, it will detect those characteristics imposed by the triac dimmer and generate uh, appropriate pulse width modulation for the LEDs. So I'm going to plug the output of our adapter into the LED strip and the output of the power supply into the adapter. When I switch on, you see that the incandescent comes on immediately. The LEDs come on after a small startup delay from the power supply. And now as I pull the slider down, the bulb and the LEDs dim with approximately the same profile. If you look closely, you see that the profile is not 
quite exactly, precisely the same. And that is uh, by design, as it turns out. First of all, when the incandescent bulb comes on at its brightest uh, position, it's not as bright as it would have been if the dimmer weren't there at all. The reason is that even with the slider all the way up, the triag dimmer cuts a small portion out of the AC waveform, which of course makes the bulb come on dimmer. Now our adapter knows about this phenomenon, and so uh, it won't start to dim until it notices a wider interruption of the AC power waveform. As I pull the slider down, you'll see that the LEDs dim a little bit faster than the incandescent bulb, and this again is by design. When we get near the bottom, you may be able to see individual dimming steps, and, it, and there comes a point right about here where the LEDs don't dim any further, but the incandescent does dim a little bit more. <clears throat> and then when I push the slider back up, there's a, a little dead range before the LEDs begin to brighten again. So uh, uh, there's a there's a a good reason for this, and uh, it, although it may not apply to your situation, first of all, we can choose pretty much any dimming profile we want. You can think of this as a compressed dimming profile. We use less than the full range of the slider uh, when we when we turn on with the slider all the way uh, in its brightest position, we'd like the LEDs to come on at 100%. So we want to wait for a little bit of slider motion before we begin to dim. As we dim down, it's important that we reach our dimmest level before the power supply conks out. Now, it's all the way to the bottom and our LEDMO power supply is still operating, and it usually does, but sometimes it doesn't. Of course, if the if the power supply stops functioning, then the LEDs will go completely out until sufficient power is restored. And that's not really an operational difficulty for users. Uh, in, in our particular design here for the demo, we've chosen to use 60% of the slider motion as our active range. Uh, some power supplies may require no compression at all. But even within that range, there is enough control that if you want to make the bulbs just a little brighter or just a little dimmer, you can do that with ease. So there you almost have it. But there is one other consideration that you must take into account if you want to uh, dim LEDs with the triac control. Recall that the triac dimmer performs its function by interrupting portions of the AC waveform. The more it interrupts, uh, the less of the time the load is connected to the AC line. So with incandescent bulbs, that means uh, a less amount of lighting you get. Now you would expect that during that uh, period of time when the AC is disconnected from its load, that the AC voltage on the line would be zero. That is a, a very good way to have it work because it makes it easy for our power detection circuit to detect when the uh, triac has disconnected AC power. But that expectation doesn't always hold for the, these LED power supplies, and this LEDMO model is an example of that. The reason is that uh, some power supplies, including this one, during the power off portion of the waveform, feed some reactive currents back into their power pin. And of course, when the AC line is disconnected, it's high impedance, even a tiny amount of reactive current can produce considerable voltage. And that voltage can confuse the power sensing circuit and make the doing not work so well. Now, even though our LEDMO power supply does have that problem, you haven't noticed it so far in our demo, that's because the little incandescent bulb here 
has done a fine job of absorbing those reactive currents and uh, prevented them from causing a problem. But if I disconnect the incandescent bulb and then pull the slider down, you, you may be able to hear, even now, at, at full brightness, a little bit of noise coming out of the power supply. And as I pull it down further, uh, quite a bit more noise comes out and the dimming performance is very poor. Well, if your power supply has this problem with reactive currents, there are a number of approaches you can take. Uh, for our LEDMO power supply, it turns out that a 2700 ohm resistor will suffice and uh, basically perform the same function that our incandescent bulb has performed for the demo here. The 2700 ohms across 120 volts consumes five and a third watts. So that may be acceptable, but if you're, uh, if you have a, a power supply like this that starts out at say 85% efficiency and consume another five and a third watts, that would bring it down to 79% efficiency. Uh, you might start thinking about whether that really is acceptable. If it isn't, and if your power supply design is affected by that problem, there may be several other design approaches to tackling it. For example, uh, you may be able to suppress the unwanted reactive currents with a reactive network instead of a resistor, or you may be able to isolate your reactive components from the power line. You might even be able to generate an appropriate power sensing signal from the reactive currents. But one way or another, the power detection pin must be able to detect when AC power is and is not connected to the AC power line. Well, I hope I've convinced you that full-featured LED dimming is a practical reality today with responsive technology. Visit our website at responsiveled.com and fill in a contact form for personal response. Thank you for watching.